Okay, let's get started. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Thanks a lot for joining in today. I'm really excited to see you all here and to see you all. Plus, I can see some faces from the Notion uh, series. So thanks a lot for joining in again here. And uh, let's get started with today's session. So today we have Grace with us. Grace is the founder of Design Buddies, and she's also a product designer at Electronic Arts. Uh, Grace, by the way, I do want to know from you later on, what do you like to be uh, introduced at? Is it the founder at Design Buddies, or is it the product designer at EA? Founder at Design Buddies, 100%. Okay, so let's rewrite that. So yeah, so today we have with us Grace, the founder of Design Buddies, and we're going to talk about standing out as a designer through personal branding and content creation. And this is going to be a fun, fun session. Throughout the session, feel free to share your views inside the chat, as well as if you have any questions or if you have any views, etc. feel free to add them to the chat. And uh, Grace was telling me just before we started the session that she kind of does it in a Twitch streaming way. So I'm sure you all would have a fun time ahead. Okay. And uh, without taking a lot of time introducing her, uh, introducing her, uh, maybe just let me put it out like she founded Design Buddies, which is now a community of, I guess, 60K plus uh, members helping designers improve their skills and land jobs. She is also a UX designer at Electronic Arts, building product for creators. And she's a self-taught designer who graduated with majors in bioengineering and computer science from the SF Bay area in California. And uh, she has been into running art businesses or into anime conventions and a lot of different things. So passing on to Grace and let's get started. Awesome. Thanks so much for having me on. I see everyone like inviting their AI co-pilots, which is pretty cool. I love that. Uh, yeah, without further ado, I'll start sharing my screen and thanks so much for having me on. And during this session, it'll be super interactive. So feel free to chime in in the chat anytime. If you see something you resonate with or have any questions, I have it open. Um, yeah, so today we'll be talking about how to stand out. Oh, let me just wait for my share. Is my screen there? Oh, there we go. Awesome. Today, we'll be talking about how you can stand out as a designer through personal branding and content creation. And the goal of this is to have opportunities come to you instead of you seeking them out. And throughout this presentation, I also draw. And so these are all my drawings. Um, I, will, I see some of y'all into anime. Uh, I'm heavily inspired by anime. And the Fluffles here, Fluffles, the friendly bunny mascot of Design Buddy. So yeah, and then this is my original character, Fluffy, which is a human version of Fluffles. With the pink tips and ears. Thank you, Saira. For our quest for today, I'll first go through some introductions, um, but I want to know about you as well. So feel free to like introduce yourself in the chat. Um, talk about like foundations of personal branding, how you can express yourself on social media, how you can design your brand and LinkedIn best practices and post ideas. And then I'll be sharing a Fig Jam link where y'all can start thinking about what to post on LinkedIn to help you get over writer's block so you can have some really actionable key takeaways to start standing out as a UX designer. And then we'll end with a Q&A. So let's get started. Well, yes, Ukar Sharedi um, introduced me. I'm from the SFA area as well. I do a lot of different things. Um, currently focused on design buddies, content creation, doing a lot of LinkedIn content, LinkedIn and Instagram content. Um, right now I'm at EA and I come from a non-traditional design background. I actually studied computer science engineering and bioengineering, so yeah. Um, yeah, what are all y'all's backgrounds? Are you also in product design? Are you a career transitioner? Um, did you study something else? Let me know in the chat. I see like a hundred folks in here. Gra computer science, graphic design, senior UI designer, advertising, senior motion designer, product design commissioner, career from filmmaking, design lead, background philosophy. Um, Nice, nice. I see some questions. We'll be having questions towards the end as well, so make sure to save them for later. Cool. So my background, growing up, I want to be an anime artist. Um, I loved anime. Uh, I see y'all like anime, so comment your favorite anime in the chat. I want to be anime artist and game designer. And being born and raised in Silicon Valley, um, I was always told I needed to be like a doctor, engineer, or lawyer. Um, so I actually came to college as a bioengineering pre-med major, uh, because I was also an avid cross-country track runner, um, still hold my school records, but I wanted to learn how to biohack myself to run faster. So that's why I studied bioengineering. 
And then I realized I didn't really like working in the lab. Um, so I pivoted over to computer science and game dev. Um, and then I realized that I didn't really like to code. Like I really wish I liked to code, but no matter how hard I tried, I just couldn't like vibe with it. And so that's how I got into UI, UX and product design because first of all, it pays really well without being to code. And second of all, it combines my um, art and science backgrounds. Um, on the side, I've always done a lot of random side hustles outside of like my major and um, work. So I've been creating content on Tumblr since 2014 in high school. Um, and then I also had an art business where I made stickers, pins, charms, and table to anime conventions. Currently also doing design buddies and content creation to this day as well. Nice, I see people like animes in the chat. And I'm also curious, what made y'all want to get into UX? Like, is it because you want to work on products? Any like dream projects you want to work on? Like any industries? Let me know in the chat as well. Like why, what brings y'all here? Like, I like building key things people use, making products that help people feel empowered, always creative but wasn't into art. Yeah, I felt that as well. Like I feel like doing pure art is like hard for me because it's very like subjective. And I like UX because it's very objective. You know when you're like success, you can know how to measure success expand my graphic design business, overall picture, solving problems, storytelling, marketable, I agree. Um, very hands-on techie, nice. Thanks y'all for sure and being so engaged. So now I'll talk about personal branding. So what is a brand? I would say a brand is like an example. So some brand examples, I would say it's like a feeling and experience. So for example, Nike, just do it. They make you wanna go out and work out. Um, Apple, you feel very like modern. Um, so I was saying it's a perception experience. So it's kind of like a personality, but packaged in a way that creates memorable experiences. Um, so what is a personal brand? So I would say people with strong personal brands like Elon, Taylor, and Mark, um, for example, um, they do a lot of, they're very, I feel like to me, they, they stand out. Um, for example, Elon has like really interesting tweets and it really helps their business and helps them stand out. Um, essentially, when I think about personal brand, I think about like, how do I want to make people feel when I show up? And what do people say when I leave the room? Um, kind of like the impression and kind of vibe I want to give, leave to people as well. And I would say you already, you all already have your personal brand. It's kind of like an extension of your personality. And it's always iterative. Like we always, as humans, learn, grow, change. And it's not like final, finalized at all. Um, and like, why should you care about putting out your personal brand? Like, I feel like standing out from, I guess, the competitive job market with all these like layoffs and um, a lot of people in the job market, it really had to stand out, at least for me. So for me, um, I actually, because I don't, I don't have a design degree or certification, I study engineering. Um, I actually got my job through code messaging on LinkedIn. And I, but before that, I had a portfolio and a LinkedIn profile and some posts on LinkedIn and really thought through about my personal brand stuff. Um, it honestly helps me like make more friends on LinkedIn and make more friends like on Instagram, social media helps me build my network, has given me lots of opportunities to be featured on the media, including like Times Square, Wall Street Journal and more. Um, also, if y'all into freelancing, which I saw in the chat, it helps you build more trust and authority. So it helps you be able to charge more um, and generate more leads because people know what niche you're in and what kind of work you do. Um, I would say it's kind of a little bit different than self-promotion. It's it's essentially like expressing yourself and finding some people to connect with. So now I'll talk about like kind of like next steps you would take. So first you wanted to find like your core values. Like what do you do? What do you care about? What do you want to work on? And who are you trying to target? And really knowing your story and owning your story. Um, and then you want to think about like your mission statement, kind of like the thesis statement, how you want to put yourself out there. Uh, for example, for me, um, I like to create experiences that help make people make meaningful connections in design. So I do this through design buddies. I do this through like doing a lot of talks like this, helping people connect with each other. Um, also at EA, I work on creator networks, so helping content creators connect there too. 
And so some different examples of mission statements is if y'all are specializing like e-commerce, maybe you're really into like prioritizing accessibility. Um, if you're interested in the like, gaming industry, you really want to make like memorable and engaging experiences and more. So, and um, essentially doing things, telling people about it. Uh, now talk about expressing your brand. I also have a lot of slides, so um, definitely check out the recording if I'm going too fast. Um, so where you want to express yourself your personal brand is on the internet. I'll be talking about like more online examples, but a lot of these things can cross over to in person. Um, so you want to have like a home base for like your portfolio. Um, social media helps you discover people and meet people there as well. And there's also different places if you're a content creator that can share more content um, about you as well. Um, for your home base or your portfolio, you definitely want to have some projects that highlight your thinking. Um, also, maybe in your about page, tell a personal story about how you got into design um, and more things that you can sh about you that you can share as well. This is my portfolio site. It's just grace-ling.com. If y'all want any examples, I it's just yeah, I'll just share in the comments for that. I still updating it like always but feel free to check it out oh i see a lot of ai assistant nice and i see um question i don't understand instagram tiktok etc it's still okay to be here yes definitely i won't be sharing examples for well i feel like the stuff i'll share can be relatable to more more platforms but um towards the end i'll have an interactive activity to help y'all brainstorm some linkedin posts <laughs> I just need to scroll down. I see some new chats as well. Um, yeah, these are just some things you can include on your social media to have a complete profile um, and some bios. So these are some examples. I like to make it very short, very like skimmable um, of my bio and then making it to the point about what I do on the internet. So yeah, these are this is like LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter. Um, and for the content, how I want to think about content is but later on this presentation, I'll be giving some examples of different prompts you can do. Um, but for the goal of content creation, for me at least, is I want to add value. So add value as in like telling a story, so how people connect with, feel less alone, um, put out some practical advice and more. Um, and then, yeah, more things like you can also add different calls to actions using hashtags and stuff. So I'll be diving into this like in the next section too. Um, you can also gain inspirations from your content through like what you're working on, what's happening in your local community, attending events. Um, so if anything that I mentioned uh, resonates with you, definitely make a LinkedIn post about it because I will definitely repost it with Design Buddies. Um, we have like over 50,000 followers and engage with it on my personal account as well. Um, talk about things that inspire you, your life and more. Um, yeah, the goal is to really like add value, um, being original, and really it's all, there's a lot of things, everyone's so different, so there's not really any formula, there's different frameworks and prompts you can start thinking about, but you don't need to like copy someone else, and because you already have a lot of original ideas for yourself that you can add to the conversation. Um, yeah, so some content types, you can have it like more useful, so like practical skills, it can be funny. Um, I like to share posts on LinkedIn sometimes, it's kind of funny. Um, it can inspiring, so it can write a story, or it can challenge perspectives, like do you agree or disagree with some developments in like AI and design in there as well. So some examples, I actually have, I know it's like really small, and I actually have a free Figma file where you can see all of them like zoomed in on here as well. And I see lots of like AI co-pilots, um, which is cool as well. And I see a question about link to the slide deck. Definitely message me on LinkedIn about that afterwards. Um, but I feel like, you know, I talked about algorithm. I feel like it's easy to caught up being caught up on like, oh, how do I optimize my content for the algorithm? Ultimately, algorithms always change in and it's like kind of exhausting to keep up with. And I would say it's really quality over quantity, like putting content out there so it, meets you, it helps you connect with people that are relevant to your niche. Um, not necessarily like always trying to stress out about the algorithm. Um, 
algorithm does help you reach more people, but I don't think it's like the end all be all. It's always changing. Don't stress out about it, but it's always good to know some best practices as well. It's also knowing your target audience, who you're trying to target, really quality over quantity. Um, so I talked about LinkedIn, um, but there's also lots of different social media sites like Instagram's more visual, um, LinkedIn, a lot of more professionals hang out. That's why as a job seeker and trying to grow their career, I would, if you're like overwhelmed by all these social media, I would just recommend just doing LinkedIn. Um, but also if you're really into content creation, I've gotten a lot of great leads from like, and met a lot of great people from like Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter as well. I think Twitter's still active. I'm going to call it Twitter. So I don't think it died at all in my experience. Um, for longer content, you can also consider adding it on your portfolio, starting a blog or a newsletter like on Medium or like a LinkedIn newsletter. Um, you can also start a YouTube channel if you're really into talking to the camera or like a podcast if you like more long form content. And then also engaging with the community. Um, I feel like social media is really a two-way street. It's a way to share your expertise, but also a way for you to meet other people, um, help each other out, share value. And then to get started. So if you are exactly starting from scratch, I would start as like a curator, like look, scrolling through your feed, connecting with thought leaders and relevant people in your industry. Um, connecting with others there, like yourself. I see Jasmine shared a easy networking. So I think it's a networking special. So definitely at each other on LinkedIn um, and seeing what y'all are posting about. You can also start by commenting on people's posts. So if you agree with it, you want to add your own thoughts to it. And then hopefully that'll help you get inspired to create some original content and connect with others as well and make more friends. So these are just some resources that I've learned about more about like personal branding. So uh, definitely feel free to take a screenshot. I'll count down so anyone can take a screenshot. Three, two, one. Um, yeah, and I'll talk about designing your brand. So these are more like how you can express yourself visually. Um, and these, these are things you can consider keeping consistent on like your portfolio, resume, cover letter, LinkedIn cover, LinkedIn photo, LinkedIn posts as well to help you create like a visual consistent experience for you. Um, so definitely colors. I feel like colors, they also can influence feelings, but they can also mean different things across different cultures. So definitely take things, these things with a grain of salt, but these are just like some ideas that can start with how you want to create consistent color palettes. And the diff different fonts as well, which can mean different things. So it can use like the same font and colors like on your portfolio and resume. So the hiring manager will recognize like, oh, it's you. Um, and stand out that way as well. Um, you can also create different patterns and textures um, if you want in your visuals as well. This is my own. I like speech bubbles because I like content creation, social media. This is Design Buddies. We're like like a like a fun toy box community um, and more. Um, and you also have consistent photography styles. Like I have a lot of random Instagram accounts for all my like random hobbies throughout my life. And so I always like to keep my feed consistent and also consistent illustrations and iconography as well. Uh, and I'll talk about your LinkedIn profile. So these are just some elements you want to consider on your profile. Um, and the headline is like your first impression. Um, so for me, I like to be really descriptive of what I do. So I like doing design buddies. I'm an EA, I also illustrate, I'm also a content creator and speaker. Um, and then you can also put about like what you, what kind of like niche and UX design you focus on. Um, you can also talk about your hobbies as well and what you do. And um, first impression, so it can be descriptive about it. It's like prime real estate to tell people who you are in one not in one line. Um, to just like my bio, um, I know it's really small, so I'll just like add my LinkedIn so I can scroll. But essentially, I like adding it with emojis to add some more personality to it. And I like to make it very um, spaced out so it's very skimmable. And each paragraph is like ha talking about different things about myself and also including relevant keywords um, because this helps with your SEO. So people like search on LinkedIn, they can help find you more if you include like relevant keywords. Like for me, I do like community building, I do UX design, I do illustration, um, I do events. So I mentioned it all in my um, bio as well so people can discover me optimizing the SEO. 
And then in your experiences section, um, it's like an extension of a resume. And so for me, I like to also, if you work at a job um, during performance review season, typically you have a self summary about everything you've accomplished. And with permission, I just copy and paste exactly what I have on there, but with approval, because I don't want y'all to get into trouble in case don't show anything NDA. Um, and here, you really want to include as many numbers as you can. Um, and if you don't have numbers, you can also talk about how you might have improved the process. Maybe you gave a presentation to your team internally. You helped other people improve their productivity. Um, but as much as you can, include numbers. Just to say you your redesign generated like $100,000 more in sales, or your redesign helped 76% of people um, improve a tax, task. So like percentages, numbers, be as much, add, include, uh, include as many numbers as you can. Um, and yeah, treat this as an extension of a resume and then also include specific keywords you want people to discover you from as well. Uh, let's talk about some LinkedIn post ideas. So, and then we'll have a fig jam activity where I'll share in the chat where y'all can start brainstorming LinkedIn posts um, to come with some actual takeaways. So I would say LinkedIn is kind of like a micro blogging, blogging platform. It's definitely more long form than like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, but definitely more short form than like a blog. Um, and the posts have a longer lifespan. Um, and so some posts you can start get started with is your journey to UX design. So I can talk about what your background is, what got you interested, kind of what skills did you gain from your background that cross over to design? This is a really great way to stand out and highlight your skills, um, what challenges, successes you have along the way. And this um, is it helps people become inspired to go into UX design and also helps showcase your background because I feel like a lot of us, um, and let me know in the chat if y'all are a career transitioner as well. Um, for me, I used to feel like, oh, I starting from scratch. Like, um, but I feel like being transitioning from something else to UX design is actually a superpower because there's a lot of soft skills that can gain to design. Um, for example, if you come from engineering, you're really great at like systems thinking, lot critical thinking. Um, if you come from like customer service, you're really great at working with people. And so no matter if you're a conversion traditioner, you always have different skills you can highlight. And this is a great way to highlight those in like your journey to UX design posts. You can also talk about some stories and lessons you've learned. So these could be like your attended to design event. So if anything that I said resonates with you, I would love to see y'all post a recap on LinkedIn. So feel free to take any screenshots of my presentation as well. I think this is also recorded. Um, you can also talk about like you bought a house. What did you learn from that? Moved to a new city. You graduated from like a degree or boot camp. Um, you ran a race, you traveled somewhere, what did you learn from it? What challenges you faced? How you overcome them? What did you learn? So talking about a story, um, some key learnings. And I always like to end with a question to say like, does anyone have a similar experience or have any thoughts to add to it as well? And what you're working on. So you can talk about like, what you do like in design, outside of design. Um, so whether you're like training for a marathon, you like to draw, um, and you can talk about like things that are non-design related, at least for in my experience, it's a great way to showcase your personality on LinkedIn. You also talk about tools you use, how they help, maybe some of your goals and some of your learnings along the way to add value. Also talk about some of the career advice, like what would you tell your younger self? Um, so what would you tell yourself in high school? Um, what are some resources you would recommend? And more. You can also talk about like what's trend and what's popping, like um, where your take on AI is, data privacy, AR, VR, um, and how that influences your interests and perspective as a designer and what kind of experiences you have from it. And also like the LinkedIn news section is a great way every day to maybe get inspired by some topics that are popping up in the industry as well. So talk about your inspiration, which is not limited to design. For example, you travel to like Rome, you really like the architecture of the Colosseum, you wanna talk about how it inspires you, um, or you had a really great conversation with someone, you wanna make a LinkedIn post highlighting it and shouting them out too. Um, so talk about things that inspire you that are not limited to just design. Because talk about stories from long ago, like something nostalgia and how that relates to you now and what you would tell your younger self. 
And also it can reflect on a period of time. So December right now is a great time to reflect on how your 2023 went, what went well, what didn't go well, what happened, what did you learn? What are your goals for 2024? What are your key takeaways? And you talk about also, I know y'all also like LinkedIn, I don't think self-promotion is like a bad thing. You definitely got to advocate for yourself to get what you want. And so this could be like, hey, I'm on the market. I'm looking for a new job or like, hey, I'm starting a newsletter. Subscribe if you want to learn more about XYZ um, or you have a product you want to sell. And so this, you want to talk about like who you are, what you're asking for. And honestly, like I feel like for me, when I talk to people, um, People feel, some people feel like really hesitant about self-promotion and people are like, oh no, I don't want to come off as like a sellout. Um, but I want to say like, don't be afraid to put yourself out there because I think those who have negative things to say aren't your target audience and that is okay. We can't please everyone and we don't live life to please everyone. Um, you can also share videos on LinkedIn. You can also do like a video cover letter, um, building personal uh, building personal connections, sharing some advice. So more like putting your personality out there, which which I love to see. Um, you can also do like more dating your lives. And I've also had a really good experience recently with LinkedIn Lives. They've been very, very engaging. So I love doing those as well. Just kind of putting myself video, audio form out there to showcase my personality. And also LinkedIn also has a newsletter, which I actually recently started a LinkedIn newsletter too. Um, they're longer than posts. So I like to focus like deep diving on topics, stories, lessons I've learned, and also very shareable. And I, I, for all my posts, I love to include like a call to action. So whether that's like comment your thoughts as well, or let me know your experiences in X, Y, Z to help, help people like be part of the conversation and build a community. And I would say like for, Kind of thinking about like what do you want to post? I would think about it as like eighty percent as value add and twenty percent as promoting yourself. Um, and also, if y'all are into other social media platforms, you can also repurpose them. Work smart, not hard. But also, don't directly copy and paste. You can change it in a way that fits the platform. So, um, for example, on Twitter, you can make it maybe making the LinkedIn post. If you have a blog, you can maybe repurpose that on your LinkedIn articles um, and more. And then for best times to post, it really depends on your audience. I if I would turn on LinkedIn creator mode to see um, who your where your audience is. And I tend to notice between like 8 a.m., 11 a.m. of your target time zone is the ideal time. And for me, most of my target audience is actually in North America. Um, so just test it out. But also take this with a grain of salt. Like this is just a framework. I've had posts go viral when I post at like 6 p.m. on a Friday night. So it really depends. But it's to start with, it's good to see like where your audience is at. Um, and also, I have a Fig Jam link. We can start brainstorming some ideas in together. I'll share it in the chat. So let me know if this works. I know, okay, I see everyone joining in. So here, right, let's uh, let's brainstorm some LinkedIn content ideas together. Um, let me know if y'all can edit it as well. Everyone should be able to edit. So I'll kind of take a couple of minutes to start brainstorming ideas, and then I have some more slides, and we can and then we can end with some Q and A. So for in, for information advice, so we can talk about like what you want to post on LinkedIn, inspirational slash story. Um, recent tech and what inspires you, for example. And feel free to just like duplicate this and start brainstorming. I see everyone. I'm going to take like, as everyone gets in, I'm going to do like an Instagram story because um, this is cool. I always love seeing all the cursors. You're going to start reading them out. So for informative advice, you can talk about, oh, I'm going to wait for everyone to, yeah, inspirational story. You can talk, definitely talk about career switching, um, recent tech. Yes, you can talk about chat GPT, how that affects UX. So these, in case you all are, have a writer's block, hopefully these ideas will help spark some inspiration to help you start creating content on LinkedIn. Because ultimately for me, 
Um, that's actually how I got all my jobs and our big sponsors without reaching out to people, as I just create content on LinkedIn and people reach out to me. And so hopefully I can inspire the same for you. Um, we talk about collaboration with IT, inspiring designers like Grace who connect the dots on design for still running. Thank you, Rachel. Appreciate it. And talk about book reviews, AI design tools, UX design and no code, challenges you overcame, how to communicate developers and teammates, start with the mind, figure out how you want to do, time management and tips. Love these ideas. Everyone get in Figma. We're going to take a take a Instagram selfie. I will I mean, I'll take a little, little Instagram story as, as we add our ideas in Figma. Nice. Y'all gonna be in my Instagram now. Take a couple screenshots. Oh, hi everyone. Wait, wait, oh, keep waving. I'm gonna do another one. Keep waving, keep waving, keep waving, keep waving. Hello, we're with ADP List on how to stand out with design through content creation and personal branding and everyone's brainstorming their LinkedIn posts. Look at everyone clapping and waving at each other. Wee! I love to see it. <laughs> All right, it's going to be on my Instagram story at I run Grace Face if y'all want to see it later as well. I'm going to give a, everyone a couple more minutes and start reading some out, but I'll be posting this on Instagram. Raz has no idea what to write about. Well, you can also write about like your journey to UX, um, like AI and design. And yeah, let me just see. You have a lot of posts in here. How to scale out research and design via research ops. Design research ops and design ops. Um, I, I learned basic UX design principles through Google, Coursera, more practice, hopefully shadow some real work. Making design system from zero. I love that. How to design full-time work on your side projects. Oh, I can definitely talk about that. Um, I love it. I'll give him one, maybe a minute or two more. And this LinkedIn is, this uh, file is for you to keep. So definitely feel free to continue adding your ideas and inspiring each other to start posting on LinkedIn and getting over writer's block. Time management tools. Design thinking. Visual effect to make your UI better, using AI and Figma plugins to speed up design process, making websites and apps that are fun and engaging, optimizing workflows, UX style and no code, Dolly Midjourney, payment method in different countries, physical to digital, how to be brave about scary topics, Share your design process and create animations. See everyone still riding. I love to see it. Documenting failures, have you overcome them? Designing for humans, how psychology impacts behavior and design. Moving with startups to large corporations, getting over imposter syndrome, that's a big one. Studying and reading hacks to keep you up to date with all the design and tech trends. Showcasing your personality. Amazing, amazing. I see everyone still adding to it. Yeah, definitely keep this. And um, yeah, after the session, if y'all feel keen on it, definitely tag me, Design Buddies and ADP List, because we'll have to see it and help engage and boost up your posts so people can find it. And we have a combined audience of like, uh, like over like almost 90,000. So definitely we'll engage with it and hopefully make help you be more visible on LinkedIn so you can get more opportunities, meet more people, and land that job. Yeah, definitely talk about what you learned. Um, and I'll talk about LinkedIn and networking. We love networking. Here's a cool flow flow. So I have a secret hack. Um, I'm going to start sharing my screen. But before that, on LinkedIn, I want to know in the chat, what is everyone's, what is your dream company? 
I know dream company doesn't exist, but what is like a company that someone wants to work at? Apple. Okay, Apple. So let me use Apple as an example. Um, Apple. So where are you all based out of? Toronto. So that's fine. Okay, Apple, London, India. Okay, so I don't really know Apple in these offices, but let's just pretend you want your dream job is a product designer at Apple and you're based in the Bay Area. So what I actually did was, all right, let me um, share my other screen. So let's pretend your dream job is at Apple and you're based in San Cupertino, California. So what do you want to do is search design manager. So search like, so this is a way that what I'm demoing right now is a way to connect with relevant people in the industry that will be good to learn from and potentially lead to a job. So I search design manager, senior manager, um, VP of design, design directors, and connect with them. And then because I search for those people because a lot oftentimes these people are in the positions of hiring or know someone else in their team that might be hiring. So I'm gonna search design manager and I can filter based on company and location. So I, li I live in the SF Bay area and I see someone wants to work at Apple. So Apple, so I now wanna show results. So here, you can see all these design managers at Apple. So you want to add all of them and make sure to send a personalized invite. Ask in a later I have some slides to share about that. So these are all design managers at Apple based on where you live. So filter by company and filter by location. And then you want to add everyone like a personalized invite and also to find more people, you can also view people also viewed and add them too. And then in my slides, I'll give you ex my exact template of my personalized invite. So what I actually did to get my job at EA was I searched design manager uh, or manager or design director filtered by company, filtered by location and added everyone that I was interested in chatting about. I did this 400 times over the course of a month and landed my job without applying. Another LinkedIn hack I could do is Look, it's just say you're hiring, someone is like hiring UX designers, UX designers. You can also search posts. So oftentimes um, manager, like people hiring um, or HR will make a post about it. So you can search LinkedIn hiring UX designers. You can see everyone who's like posting about hiring UX designers. And you can also filter by like when they posted um, you can also you can do, for example, hiring designers, Apple, and you could do like, maybe you're in Cupertino or something. And you might be able to find some posts about it. And this is a really great way to connect with someone. Just like say like, hey, um, I guess maybe we can't find it here. I don't know if they're hiring right now, so that's why I don't know, but essentially, you can also do like, who is hiring UX designers? So all these people are hiring UX designers. You can also talk about, um, you can see all filters. Um, you can also look from company. So let's just say, I think Apple calls them product designers. So maybe so Apple and maybe like, you wanna work out like Google or something. I saw Google in the chat. Um, and then it can also add like keywords, um, they posted latest, so show results. So let's just say, oh, from company. I guess no one from Google and Apple's hiring UX designers, but essentially what you can do is like search people who post about hiring, hiring as well. So maybe you're hiring designers and then you want to work at like Adobe or something. Cause I, I think Adobe is hiring. I, well, my friend asked me, so like, that's how I know. Um, you can also search like, maybe you want to work at like Adobe or something. And 
You can do show results. Oh, well, I guess no one is hiring designers right now. But essentially, what you can do is like, um, yeah, excess time, slow hire. That's true. You can definitely do the same for remote jobs. So essentially, you can use LinkedIn to find people to connect with, as well as finding people who post about the jobs that they are hiring for. And I will go over the rest of my slides, which includes the exact template I've sent. LinkedIn. All right. So this is exactly what I said 400 times to land my jobs. Um, so I was like, hi, I'm a grad student studying computer science, engineering, looking to pursue UX design. Would love to learn how you got to where you are today. Also, I would also look at their profile to see what we have in common. For example, if we went to the same school, Santa Clara University, um, I'll say like Go Broncos, we both like to draw, I'll mention that as well. But the, the, the goal is to keep it short and sweet. And um, when you want to connect with them, um, keep it about learning. Like, don't ask for a job, but like try to see, like learn from their experiences and make new friends, help each other out. Um, because if you ask for a job in the first um, request, it would just really kill the vibes. And honestly, I feel like the real value is like the friends you make along the way. Like sometimes it'll lead to a job, sometimes it won't. And these are like long-term connections that I've made. Um, so for example, like they were laid off and then I also helped refer them to EA. So it's it's really like a mutual connection that you're trying to get. Um, but this is how I would like try to cold DM them and slide it. Just brief introduction and just like want to learn, about, learn more about them because people also love to talk about themselves. And you want to get, you want to see if you can hop on like a chat. Um, you can also definitely do this on ADP list as well. Like I know ADP list has lots of mentors, so you can also reach out to people and um, maybe do like do an informational interview. So I like to ask like, hey, we, we both like have a computer science background. Um, I want to know like how you got to where you are today or like what are some of your favorite projects? What did you learn from them? And like maybe what are you currently working on? Um, what is your process? And just try to get to know them like on a professional level and as a personal level as well. Um, and really just focus on learning and building that relationship. And I would discourage asking for like a referral unless unless like they help, they um initiate it as well like i just try to like feel out the vibes that feel comfortable ask for i'll ask for one um but yeah but don't ask for a job the first time because it kind of makes the relationship feel um very transactional and networking is really like an investment on your long-term professional journey like even if there's nothing you can collaborate on now there could be some things that could come later and sometimes you can also help each other out by introducing each other to like different people in your network so yeah long term long term I also have a course, a live cohort based course called content creation for UX designers standing out in competitive job market. So if y'all if y'all really like what you've seen here and like to learn more, um, I'm also offering like a 50% discount for students and folks who are laid off. So I'll share it in the chat as well. If you'd like to sign up for it too. This is my second time running this cohort. I did the first one in November and it was really rewarding and I got lots of great feedback. So it's uh, my second time running it as well. Uh, so definitely sign up for it and hope hopefully um, I added value to your life today as well. And now we'll hop into a Q&A. So feel free to connect with me on any of my social media platforms and I'll kick it off with some Q&A. So I'll start sharing my screen and yeah, this Q&A. Yeah, thanks everyone. Um, any questions? I'm trying to scroll up to see. Questions, I'll put my screen up so people know how to ask questions. Ukarsh, any questions that came up during the, any interesting questions that came up? Thank you, Grace. That was a fantastic session. And uh, yeah, so a couple of them. Uh, first of them is how are you able to get a drop down in your account avatar? A drop down in which part? 
in the uh, i guess this is regarding when you were sharing the linkedin uh, screen how do you get a drop down there when you click on your profile and all the details etc i'm not sure if it's a technical question or that is because if uh, you might have enabled the creator profile so i think oh yeah enable creative creator profile on linkedin it's a setting okay okay so let's go to the next one uh this is in terms of uh, reaching out to people what's a good message that you would recommend uh, sending to them to connect in terms of the ice breaking when you're reaching out to people what's a kind of a good message for that mm -hmm. yeah i would just say like hi I briefly introduce yourself like hi i'm a ux designer here i see that we both do this love to connect and chat further so something short and sweet like introduce what we have in common and call to action okay thank you the next one is from Iman. It is, uh, how do you go about finding remote jobs? Yeah, remote jobs. I feel like people post them a lot on LinkedIn. I know there's also remote job boards for remote. I think it's like remote jobs. Um, and then, yeah, in Design Buddies, we also have like a channel where I've seen called Paid Opportunities, where it's free. Um, and I've seen people post remote jobs there as well. Okay, uh, second up is what are your thoughts on opening a UX design firm as a long term goal in UX? Yeah, I think I think it's good if you are interested in doing it. Um, I, I've known people who worked a, a, I work on like getting some experience first, like working for like large company or a startup to really understand the process and get better at your craft before doing it. But yeah, I think it's a good thing to do after you've gotten some industry experience in UX. Okay, the next one is while building personal branding, do you think social media username is important? What should one do if name plus uh, surname is already taken? Yeah, I I agree. Yeah, social media is important. I think it's important to have a um, similar name across all the platforms so people can easily recognize you. Um, name plus surname is taken, yeah. So I like to make puns with my name. Um, or I've seen people like add numbers or like add something else. For example, um, I'm Grace Ling is taken everywhere. So on Instagram, I am I run Grace Pace because I have a newsletter called Grace Pace and I like running and I like encouraging people to run their own pace in life. So it's that. Um, I also have an art Instagram called Candy Leaf because it has nothing to do with my name, but I have been drawing for a while and it was like my gamer tag. On Twitter, I'm Grace Leaf because um, like candy leaf grace leaf um so yeah i just kind of like add i've seen people add numbers i've seen people like add a different phrase or be like maybe like name plus designer or like ux plus ux grace or something um so just play around with it and and um have fun with it okay the next one is how to get high quality clients and freelance work for me the high quality clients that I've gotten actually through introductions. So I go to a lot of events um, in person and online, meeting people, and then they introduce me to other people too. Um, I know there's also like design buddies that people find clients in, um, and also like on LinkedIn, like on social media, like Facebook groups, Reddit groups, like Upwork, Fiverr. But for me, high quality really came from introductions. Okay, thank you. The next one is, uh, do you have any examples of UX content creators on LinkedIn that you find interesting and are good examples? Yes, I actually just shared this. Someone else like asked that in Design Buddies today. I actually just shared it like an hour ago. So let me copy and paste um, what I shared on there as well. It's in the Professional Hangouts channel, but I will drop it here. So these are just like some people, some of my design friends that I have, and they, I think they have um, good content on LinkedIn about UX. Okay. Uh, the next one is, do you feel your personal branding on LinkedIn has helped you get jobs or opportunities? As in, do people directly reach out due to your post? Yes, people do directly reach out for my post, or they tag other people in my posts who reach out too. Okay, thank you. The next one is, uh, apart from LinkedIn, uh, do you recommend any other platforms wherein we can find design jobs? Yeah, I've seen people post design jobs on Twitter as well. So you can use Twitter, searching for Twitter posts, um, as well as like Instagram and sometimes Facebook groups, like Facebook UX design groups. 
and Reddit as well. Okay, uh, the next one is, uh, I need to build a personal brand, but my career story isn't great and lacks accomplishments. Is it possible to overcome, overcome this? I think anyone has something, I think everyone has something to share. Like when you say lacks accomplishments, I think the fact that you're here and the fact that you're taking time to attend events and improve yourself is an accomplishment itself. Um, maybe I talk about like what you learned along the way, because I think your learnings is an accomplishment too. So it doesn't have to be like, oh, you landed like a job at Fang or you made like Times Square. Like I think the fact that everyone's here and willing to put in the work in wanting to learn is the accomplishment. So don't don't be hard on yourself. And I'll talk about like when you learn your journeys along the way too. Yeah, that's very true, Grace. Uh, the next one is, what would you recommend for junior designers in this competitive market? Junior designers, yeah, it is pretty competitive. I recommend like for me, when I was a junior designer, I it was 2020 and it was also like kind of a competitive market. And what helped you is having a strong personal brand and posting on LinkedIn to stand out, to ultimately have opportunities come to me instead of me seeking them out. Because when I first got into design, I tried applying online and I just got ghosted back everywhere. Um, so I just like went the other direction and connected with people who are hiring. And that's how I got the opportunity instead of submitting into the void. So that's what I would recommend is putting yourself out there um, and connecting pe with people authentically and having opportunities uh, naturally come to you and sharing value with each other. Yeah, okay. Uh, we have a next one. It is how many projects or case studies do you think should be in one's portfolio to get an internship? I think at least two strong ones that you're proud of. Typically during an internship, you, need a, you have at least one or two projects you wanna do a portfolio walkthrough on. So have at least one or two that you feel strong in the process and have like also able to answer questions about your process, how you validated it, um, what kind of solutions you explored. So a strong one that you feel confident presenting and asking question and answering questions on. Okay. Um, yeah, if anyone else has any questions, feel free to post it up in the chat here. And uh, otherwise we will be taking up the last one for now. Is it really important to post regularly on LinkedIn and have a content schedule? I post or reshare things from time to time. Yeah, I think for me, I've had that. I've I've gotten good um, uh, opportunities from posting regularly on LinkedIn. Um, I think the algorithm is always changing. I, I like to stress. I like to emphasize, like not stressing too hard about it. Um, but I start when I post on LinkedIn. Consistency helps. Consistency helps. I started posting like once a week. So I, I've been posting on LinkedIn since mid twenty twenty. Um, so I started once a week. And then it's kind of like working out, building a muscle. Once you start doing it regularly, um, it starts becoming easier at writing. And I feel like I like to think of writing content on LinkedIn as professional development as well, because you're improving your soft skills, your communication skills, your writing skills, which will help you in your career. So think of it as professional development and starting with like once a week, building that muscle and then increasing it higher and higher. Nowadays, I post mostly like four or five times a week, but I got there over the span of a couple of years of like kind of building up my experiences and um, skill sets and posting. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next one is, uh, I'm finding it difficult to narrow down my personal brand having a generalist background. Is it more impactful to be more specialized in one area? I wouldn't want to just post for the sake of posting. Yeah, it depends what you're looking for. I definitely resonate with being a generalist. But when I was job searching, I narrowed down my brand to like, I want to work, I really want to work in the games industry or on social media. So I made that very clear. Um, these days, I do like design buddies, content creation, UX design. And so don't limit yourself. Um, I think for me, and if you all are also a generalist, I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it's a superpower. And so maybe like look for maybe you'll be a better fit like a startup. Um, yeah, so it depends on what you're looking for. You really, really want to work in specialized industry, focus on that. But if you're open to like multiple types of opportunity, um, uh, be clear, put yourself out there based on that. Okay. Uh, the next one is how would you recommend approaching non-disclosure projects without taking away from your personal brand or portfolio? Is a password sufficient or will that repel recruiters? 
Oh, great question. Definitely never share NDA. And your NDA depends on what level it is. So check with your manager about what you can share. Um, I know sometimes it could be also scary about asking your manager about putting projects in your portfolio because like, oh, are they leaving? Um, but I was able to ask, I frame it in a way of like, hey, I'm so proud of my work. I want to share. It. I'm so proud of my work here. I want to share it on my portfolio to showcase it and highlight what I've done at EA. I'm so proud of it. Um, is it okay if I share X, Y, and Z? And then I'll make a draft on my case study and share it with him for approval. Um, so yeah, and if you work, if your project is completely NDA, at least you can share what you learned from it, like at a high level. So what you took away from it and based on your experiences as well. Um, but definitely don't breach any NDA, check with people and ask your manager for permission to. Um, and then um, if, you can't at all share what you learned from it. OK, uh, maybe let's take the last one. And this is uh, what kind of things should you advise to post if you're going for a lead label role? Yeah, um, I would recommend like maybe posting about your experiences like managing teams, building products, um, your vision, like maybe future trends, like your 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 takes on like AI, how that would shape the future of design, AR, VR. So things that might be interesting to people hiring for lead level roles and maybe the soft skills or team management um, and topics like that. I see a lot of questions. Um, yeah. I could also speed run through them if, if that helps. Uh yeah okay maybe let's take the last two and yeah let's call it otherwise they are kind of ever increasing so this is uh, if you're freelancing how should you charge them per page or entire project oh charge or never charge my time because time is a finite resource so ask them about what are their goals pain points what they have to help to get out of it and then what is their budget never reveal your budget first um just ask them if they don't have a budget make it super high and then see what they say. I can talk a lot about negotiation and pricing, uh, but I also drop my links. Definitely reach out if you have any further questions too. I can take like maybe one more question. Yeah, okay. Uh, the last one, the final last one is, how do you feel about mock design projects before you get a real gig? I think it's great. Um, it's actually how I, um, what I put on my portfolio, it's still on there. So I'll send that as an example. And I think for me, I did a design of a feature on Discord. It was a great way for me to practice my UX and critical thinking skills by solving a problem of an existing project product with an existing user base so I can validate, do interviews and validate with them. So I'll drop that as a reference. But yes, I think it's a great one. And also, you can also do like design challenges um, and volunteer work um, to get some more like projects in your portfolio too. Uh, thank you a lot, great. And thank you a lot, everyone, for participating today. We had a great time hosting all of you, and I hope you all had a great time participating in today's session. And as Grace mentioned, feel free to reach out to Grace on any of the social media platforms. And in case if you have any queries, in case if you want to just connect with her or uh, join up Design Buddies as well. Thanks again, and have a great rest of the week. Bye. Thanks so much for having me. Goodbye. Bye, thank you.